Hi, I'm here on behalf of our outreach team um, to start us off on a series uh, that we are going to have uh, educating all of us on the criminal justice system and prison system. Uh, today, you are going to hear from Chaplain Bo Welch um, about two different kinds of justice. And uh, we will also have some interviews coming up and you can find out more information in the newsletter about that. Um, and we hope you will also look out for an opportunity for discussion as uh, we discuss how does our faith play a role in all of this. So I hope as you listen uh, to Bo in just a minute that you will think about uh, what does our faith, what does scripture have to say about justice? Um, so here's Bo. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Bo Welch and I'm a I spent the last six years as a federal prison chaplain. And also before that, I was in the U.S. Army for nearly 10 years. And in my time in the Army Reserves afterwards, I worked in the military police unit dealing with prisoner of war camps. And so I have a little bit of background dealing with prisons, not so much with the criminal justice, the, the forefront of it, but mostly with the prison or the penal aspect of it. So today I'm gonna to talk about restorative and retributive justice. I'm going to start with talking about retributive justice. So the, our current prison system is based on the retributive justice system. So what is it? Here's what it is. It's a theory of punishment that when an offender breaks the law, justice requires that they suffer or get their just deserts in return and that the response to the crime be proportional to the offense. So just as people deserve the fruits of their labor for doing good things, and so those who break the rules deserve to be punished. But not just punished to make it painful or severe, the punishment needs to be have equity, fairness, and the, the scales need to be balanced. That's the idea of retributive justice, at least within the US system. So in our society, retributive justice is dealt out in these three ways. First of all, it can be dealt out with fines or loss of privileges. It can be dealt out with probation, um, having to be kind of supervised on the outside without going to jail or prison or it can be dealt out in having a jail term in the county jail, state jail, state prison, or federal prison. So rarely does the offender or perpetrator approach or deal with the victim. That's one of the key points of retributive justice is the system tries to keep the perpetrator or the, the offender separate from the victim. Sometimes you'll see the victims come out within the court, when, especially during the sentencing part of a courtroom, and they will give a speech to the offender, but that doesn't happen very often. Because um, more often than not, those that go to prison never have a trial. Um, I think it's like 85, 90% of those that go to prison go on a plea bargaining agreement to where uh, they never have a trial and they never face their offender. So, so prisons are forms of punishment through confinement. So the fundamental purpose of imprisonment is not correctional, is not correcting, correcting the inmate or the rehabilitation of the perpetrator, but the punishment of criminal behavior. That's what prison, that's what our criminal justice system is about, the punishment of the behavior, of the criminal behavior. So they would say that prison should be impersonal, where every inmate is treated equally, that every inmate is treated according to the gravity of their crime, that if their crime is severe, that in the federal prison system, we have federal prison camps, we have low security prisons, medium security prisons, high security prisons, and then we have administrative maximum, which is the most secure. So there's different levels of crime, so therefore there should be different levels of incarceration. And also the amount of punishment should be proportional to the crime. Somebody who murders somebody 
should get a longer sentence than somebody who maybe unintentionally kills somebody in, in that sense. So also prisons are about accountability. They're about discipline and they're about management, management of inmates. And also in this retributive justice system, prisons are not to be inhumane. I think that's a misconception that, re re that retributive justice somehow implies that we mistreat or cause um, physical harm to inmates. That's not the case. What retributive justice means is that people get their just desserts, but also that there's this idea of fairness and equal, equal, equal treatment. Um, but also this idea is that inmates are not to be treated inhumanely, but professional. Um, in most state and federal prisons, there's a high focus on staff being professional. And what professional means in this situation means having impersonal authority, having objectivity, and having firm and respectful commitment to fairness. And here's what a sample mission statement of a retributive um, system would be like. Here's a, if you were making a mission statement for a prison that was based on retributive justice, this is what it would be. To keep prisoners, to keep them in, to keep them safe, to keep them in line, to keep them healthy, to keep them busy, and to do it with fairness, without undue suffering, and as effectively as possible. So that should give you an idea of what retributive justice is. And if you start talking about restorative justice, restorative justice has at the forefront one of the main differences is that when a crime is committed in restorative justice, it's all about making amends with the victim. It's all about relationship. It's all about from the time that you commit the crime to all the way going to prison, if prison is a part of it, is that you deal with when you've committed a crime, you've harmed another person or persons. And it's about coming to grips with how you've committed harm and, and having ha you know, the change that you need to make to make things right and it's all more relational and things like that. So restorative justice would be where in most cases, if a crime does not have a victim or if a crime is a, a nonviolent, um, let's say, uh, you know, the sale of drugs, you know, the sale of drugs or, or there's a host of other crimes that maybe aren't violent that don't really have a, a, a specific victim, is that prison should not be something in the restorative justice prison should not be for those who have nonviolent um, crimes that have no real victim. They should be treated through drug rehabilitation, through mental health counseling, through local and state you know, programs that help them to gain restitution to whatever they've done outside of the confinement um, aspect. But let's say you do have a victim, you do go to prison. The thing right now with minimum mandatory sentencing is that somebody, it, it takes no distinction between crimes. So if you commit a crime and there's a minimum mandatory sentence and it's say 10 years, 15 years, or 20 years, no matter who you are, what the circumstances are, the judge has to give you that time. And so when you go to prison, it's, if it's just about warehousing or just about keeping people in confinement for that number of years without any thought of corrections or rehabilitation, then you can, you can imagine how they say today that most people leave prison worse than when they came in. Is because when you sent, get sent to prison and you hang around with professional criminals for 15 or 20 years with no thought of restitution or restoration, then you can imagine what, what these guys and, and, and also women that come out of prison are like. And so restorative justice would have that when you come to prison, there's things like vocational training, psychology, where they get mental health, um, drug treatment, um, spirituality, religious services, there's recreation services, there's constant contact with outside sources, with volunteers, and contractors coming into the prison. There's, you keep the inmates in constant contact with their family members through visitation 
and things like that, that the key is to not just to keep them busy, but to help correct some of the things that have caused them to come to prison in the first place. And that's the kind of the main difference between uh, retributive justice and restorative justice. And there's also kind of a third way, which is kind of a mixture of the two, which is really what is happening in where I work in the federal prison system. It's kind of a mixture of the two, but whenever you mix the two, one kind of has precedence over the other. And I can say without, you know, right now, without a shadow of a doubt that the, you know, the retributive justice is the priority over restorative justice. And that's what I think needs to change. So we thank you for tuning into this uh, short video and we hope that uh, you will spend some time thinking about retributive and restorative justice and the kind of justice uh, that we uh, learn about in scripture. And we'll have some more opportunities for you to learn and discuss um, coming up. So please stay tuned for that. Thanks.